So we've got a switch light here in for repair. Uh, the customer mentions it has no charge, but all that would mean to a customer is it simply doesn't turn on. It could be anything really. So let's just go ahead and check with a charger what we get. And you can see we're getting 12 volts, so it's negotiating power, but it's not charging. So this could be a completely dead battery um, or something else, and it could be an indication that the short's inside, if so. So let's just crack this thing open. And as soon as we look in here, there's obvious signs of water damage everywhere you look. So if we look around the audio chip, see this blue, this is water damage. Blue here, blue here, blue here blue here so it's sort of all over um, most components so when you see this the obviously water damage indicator has gone off as well which isn't always accurate but it's another sign blue here so we have water damage everywhere now it's not always a problem um, I don't get why customers don't sometimes tell us it's clearly been sort of dropped in the bath or something because there's no major issue with water damage uh, we still repair all consoles but this one will have to be stripped down and all of this blue cleaned off first. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the problem you get with most water damage consoles is simply the fact that pins are bridging. It doesn't normally kill a console unless you get a voltage domain, such as say a three volt line going over to um, say a 1.1 volt line that isn't tolerant of three volts. So often with the water damage, you'll simply find that cleaning all the corrosion off is good enough. I'm also going to lift this out of the way because there we go as expected there's water damage under here as well. So this board doesn't look too bad there's only one spot there so I'll probably just clean that spot first save removing all that but we definitely want to take this board out and give it a good clean. So you can see the inside isn't too bad there's a little bit got down here uh, there's a little bit here but other than that this part isn't too bad so let's focus on this now let's just disconnect the speaker so normally you would see uh, quite a bit more damage but you can see there's a little bit there um, it's not really much on the charger chip luckily so that's probably going to be okay anyway but yeah there's not a great deal of evidence of much uh, water damage. There's a little bit here, you know, there's traces all over. It's clearly had water damage. It might not even have been the cause of the problem. It might have had water damage a while ago and it's since dried up. So the main thing for this board now is let's give this a good clean with IPA. And we want to get rid of all of these nasty blue spots. Now let's have a look around, see if all the blue has disappeared. It all seems fine that side. Let's check the back, which was worse. This had a lot more sort of residue on. This doesn't look healthy here. You can see that's actually arced and potentially burn through the traces there could just be gunk on there which actually luckily for us again it looks like it's gunk the internal connector it's probably got gunk on as well connector actually doesn't look too bad inside so i think we're lucky here i think we'll get away with so far everything i see so we should only be dealing with whatever components have failed due to the water damage afterwards but overall this doesn't look too bad a lot of people get scared by water damage thinking it's sort of a major problem you'll find half the time it really isn't it'll just short out you know maybe one or two components and so long as you know how to identify them uh, you've got no issue audio still got a bit of gunk on there and I think we're good to go
So now that's in, let's leave the speaker out a moment, chuck this back in the board, and then with this back in, the only thing we need to connect to test boot is the battery. And we'll start with actually just the battery and then trying to charge the board. I could have done that before putting it back in here, to be honest. So let's just connect the battery and let's just measure the battery voltage first. That's 2.45 volts. So that's basically a dead battery. But let's just try charging this while we have the battery in. And we can see it's not boosting up yet, but that could be just simply due to a completely flat battery. So save waiting on the battery charging. Let's just go ahead and power this off a bench supply. So to do that, we first have to just add the temperature sense resistor to trick the switch into thinking there's a battery installed and the temperature's fine. So we do that between these two pins, which is effectively test pads between the black and grey parts of the battery. And let's just disconnect this battery while we do this now because we won't need that battery. So with that on, we can add a ground wire to here and a positive wire to here. And we'll do a quick test for a dead short between ground and power first. Because we don't want to be drawing sort of 10 amps and blowing our um, ammeter reader. We'll connect the ground to ground of our bench power supply. I've got the bench set to four volts, and we're just now going to touch on the power. And you can see we're getting like five, six, seven milliamps. We can turn the switch on with this and see if it turns on. And you can see there that's booting so far. That should jump up to sort of 500 without a screen. There we go. So it looks like it's fully booting. I can tell by how the current drawer is doing what it's doing. If we put the screen in and everything, now this is a bootable console, so I can tell purely from nothing more than this current drawer that this console is now working. So we've got to wait for the battery to charge to test this, or I can just power off this bench for now, uh, and then we can test the battery charger circuit works, or just simply leave the battery plugged in and let's see what happens. So I've just connected the battery back up and left the power plugged in for literally like two minutes and it's now already uh, charging so this is clearly um, functioning and if we just measure the battery voltage we should see the battery voltage uh, rising with it being completely flat before it's only been on a few minutes but you can see there it's already up to 3.73 and if you look at it climbing 3.74 so the battery is charging, the battery charge circuit's working. Everything seems to be functional here. So that should have enough juice, I reckon, to power up even off the actual battery. So let's just connect the interconnect ribbon back. And this is technically live, so you wouldn't normally do this unless you're going to be very delicate when you reconnecting your cables to not short out any pins and screens connected ribbons connected that's all we need for the moment for a quick test so if I flip this over we haven't got power draw readings on our side at the minute because we don't have the um, bench power supply connected so we can't do kind of a boot check, but I don't know whether you can see there, but there's the home button. So you can see that the actual console is turned on under a scope. But clearly we have no backlight. So we've got no backlight circuit, which is around here. So the way this backlight circuit works is this is a little booster. So we get the, I believe it's 3.3 .3 volt coming in um, on a pin somewhere down here on one of these capacitors. I think it's probably this one. And this boosts up the output voltage on this pin here through this diode. 
uh, and you get a higher voltage on here up to about 40 volts dependent on the LEDs that are connected. So this will boost up the voltage in order to maintain around a 30 milliamp current draw. So it's basically called a current driven device, not a voltage driven device. So we can measure the voltage on here to see what voltage we get when the console is turned on. And some people think if they test this and they only see 4 volts on here, that the circuit isn't working. However, this will also not boost up unless it has LEDs in the circuit. So the problem with the switch light is it's not directly connected. So the LED here, or the chain of LEDs, which goes from, I believe it's this pin and this pin. This is where the LEDs between here and here are in the backlight. But the backlight screen connects over here. So it's these two pins here and here. So these top two pins have to make it through this from the LCD itself through this connector which has to work, down these traces which have to work, through this connector ribbon which has to be good, through all of here, down, across, up, and then into here before this sees that it has LEDs. If it doesn't, it's going to act and appear like it's not working. So a quick way to check this is chuck your meter into continuity mode, and let's do this with power off first because when the system's on it's going to affect the readings so we'll disconnect the battery disconnect the charger reconnect the ribbon so we'll put our testers on this bottom pad here and it should connect to the second pad down here which it doesn't let's test the middle pad here, so third one up, this one, and this should be connected to the top. And that one is, but this one is not connected to the pin below. So it's probably not the backlight driver, it's probably not the LCD. What it normally is, is these ribbons or the connectors. Now remember when we saw uh, the blue corrosion around here and there's a little bit of what looks like potential damage there so let's just take a look at this ribbon and you can see quite clear signs of damage and these are the backlight wires so without further testing we are pretty confident we have no backlight because this ribbon's damaged so let's just grab another ribbon. We sell these on our store. So if you want to buy these, we call them interconnect board ribbons. Uh, we do have these for sale. Along with pretty much every single part you can imagine on the switches because we repair so many of them. But let's just go ahead and we'll connect the battery back up and connect this ribbon up. Do a quick continuity test from the bottom pad to second down and we get connection. So the likelihood is now, um, this will boot up. Let's just plug the charger back in. And you can see it's charging again. And you can actually see already, low battery on the screen. And it's already turned itself on without me doing anything. So console battery low, unable to charge, even though, ah yeah, so you see, it's console battery is low so it's not charging the battery because the console's turned on that's what this means but we can see this is basically working now all these work uh, we may have no sound because the speaker isn't connected and the volume's also down so you can hear one speaker going off so that seems to be fixed now so you can see how that with complete water damage and by inspecting the pins properly I'm trying to build a knowledge base on Retro6.wiki to give you guys all this information of how to diagnose the boards the way I'm kind of diagnosing them, which is more about seeing how the chips behave, measuring them, coming up with tests to prove things. And all of this is going on Retro6.wiki. Uh, I've started the articles on the switch, and one of the next ones up is I'm going to make a little test jig that plugs into this connector because I found a little bit of a debug circuit on here. Not necessarily a debug circuit, but the way that Nintendo have clearly put these pads here 
uh, makes me know that um, when they're automated testing these, they knew about the issue with this ribbon going all the way through to here in order to just test the backlight circuit. It's tricky because it relies on the BQ chip working, the connector being right, the ribbon being right, the pads here being right, the connector up here being right, and the screen being right. As opposed to just testing does this chip work, I've now got a way to test directly if the backlight circuit works, which I'll show you in another video. But hopefully this has been useful for you guys, and you can see that a water damaged console is not necessarily um, the end of your console. It's fairly easy to clean the dirt off without any tools, and if that works for you, great. Just look for basic damage first and go from there. That's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.